All right, now that we've talked about how to assemble the instrument and how to hold the instrument, let's talk a little bit about how to take care of it and how to clean the instrument. First thing I want you to do is to take that reed off of your instrument. We'll talk about maintenance of reeds and care of reeds at a little bit later date. But for now, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to take that reed off. So notice I'm taking care of my instrument. I'm holding it really close and tight, and it's not, um, it can't be damaged. So I'm putting my reed back in the case, putting that away. Those reeds get really expensive really fast, and you want to take good care of them. Now I'm going to do the opposite with my vocal. Make sure you hold it at the crook here, never here, and gently twist it off. Again, holding the instrument safely. And now I'm going to take my vocal and stick that back in the case. Put that away securely. You always want to take good care there. Now, I recommend taking the whole instrument apart and then cleaning the separate joints. So I'm actually going to take it off of my seat strap. Hold down this key at the top, and then in a gentle twisting motion, take the bell joint off. There's no moisture in this one, so it doesn't need to be cleaned out. Go ahead and put that back in the case. Unlock the wing joint and the long joint, and remove the long joint. Again, gentle twisting motion, very careful. No moisture in this joint either, put it back in the case. Now we're going to separate the wing and the boot. Gentle twisting motion. You should have moisture in both of these joints. You may want to carefully hang on to this, just kind of shake it a little bit. You might have some water inside of this. You will. So I'll set this one down. Now, you have two openings in the boot joint. One is lined, one is not. If your instrument is made of wood, it will be really obvious which one is not lined because you'll see wood inside of that hole. It's also the larger one. The smaller one should be lined with either metal or um, rubber. And that's where you want to dump the water out from, because you do not want to get the wood wet if possible. So I'm going to just gently tip my bassoon upside down. You might want to shake it a little bit. You want to get as much of that moisture out of the instrument. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually swab out. So I have two different silk swabs here that I use. And silk is great because it just wicks the water and the moisture out of the instrument. So we want to take the bead here, the weight, and drop it down the larger side where the long joint goes in and it's down at the bottom and now you just kind of shimmy it through the instrument it's a little tricky but once that weight comes through then make sure that it's loose and there's no like knots or bunches or anything like that you're going to just gently pull that through the instrument And I recommend doing that at least once. Some people will advocate only doing it once so that you don't put water through the other side. I want you to talk to your teacher and make sure that you're doing the right thing because everybody has a bassoon teacher. Nobody just picks this up and everybody has a very strong opinion about that. So just talk to your teacher and figure out what's best for you. I'm going to take my instrument and put it back. Make sure you're putting it back in the case correctly. These are really easy to do upside down. And then, you, this one you'll probably need a smaller joint, or a smaller swab for because it's a, a very narrow clearance on the joint. So I have a smaller swab, another silk one. I'm going to take that bead. You always go biggest to smallest. So the joint that attaches to the boot, drop the weight down, and then pull it through. Depending on how thick your swab is, you may need to do this a couple of times. I would say at least once, two would probably be a better bet. Now you want to gently put that uh, the wing joint back into the case. Make sure everything is put in properly again because it's really easy to put stuff in backwards. When you fold up your swabs, I want you to just carefully um, wind the strings around them. You don't want to wrap it really tight because then they won't dry and they can get moldy and gross and they don't actually do their job. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Your reed's in the case. Put that back in the case. And then I'm going to take my seat strap, and I'm also just going to roll that up as well, and put that back in my case, close the case, and make sure it's latched. Okay, if you have any questions, please feel free to email us. Best of luck to you.